our first example for the hydraulic design of a drop structure. An irrigation channel carrying a flow of 80 cubic feet per second is to be constructed across country where the average slope of the ground is 0 0.005. But the slope of the channel is to be limited to 0 0.001 to minimize erosion to the channel bottom and sides. The overall length of the channel will be 10 miles. Drop structures with the width of 10 feet will be constructed. Determine how many drop structures are required if the vertical drop delta Z0 equals 6 feet. The known information in terms of our standard variables. Q equals 80 CFS. B equals 10 feet. That refers to the drop structure. The slope of the land is 0 0.005. The slope of the channel is 0 0.001. The length of the channel will be 10 miles. And the vertical drop for each drop structure will be 6 feet. Step 1 is to determine the critical depth as it flows into the drop structure. So that can be obtained by the fruit number equation setting the fruit number equal to 1 in a rectangular channel and solving for the critical depth. Critical depth is 1.26 feet. Step 2 is to utilize figure 6-17 determine the ratio of E2 over YC. In order to use the figure, you com must compute the ratio of delta Z0 divided by Y sub C. Therefore, 6 feet divided by 1.26 feet gives you 4.76. The numbers at the bottom of this slide represent what you read when you look at figure 6-17. So for delta Z0 over Y sub C equals 4.76, that gives you a ratio of E2 divided by YC equals 2.44. So E2 would then be 2.44 times 1.26 is equal to 3.07 feet. This would be the energy of the water as it's exiting the drop structure. Now we'll determine the initial energy of the water coming in using the standard energy equation. So E0 equals delta Z0 plus YC plus V0 squared over 2G. Now recalling from a rectangular channel only, the velocity head at critical depth is equal to 0.5 times the critical depth. So that can be substituted for the velocity to calculate the initial energy of the water as it enters the drop structure, that being 7.89 feet. Then we will determine, step four, how much energy per drop structure has to be dissipated. So the change in energy delta E is equal to E sub 0 minus E sub 2. 7.89 feet minus 3.07 feet gives you 4.82 feet to be dissipated for each drop structure. To determine the total energy that's dissipated in step 5, look at the allowable slope, the channel slope, if there were no drop structures. So the energy dissipated is 0 0.005 minus 0 0.001 times 10 miles times 5,280 feet per mile. The total energy then to be dissipated is 211.2 feet. So step six, we can estimate the required number of drop structures as being the 211.2 feet divided by 4.2 feet of energy loss per structure gives us 43.8 drop structures. 
So for this particular problem, we would use 44 drop structures. Next is determine the size of the drop structures. These can be obtained from the equations below. And there are some derivations of these equations or a full list of the equations on notes page DR07, which is part of the scanned notes. So the entire length of the drop structure would be the length of the drop plus the length for the jump. The first equation below allows you to solve for the length needed for the drop. And the second equation gives you an estimate of the length for the hydraulic jump. If you look at the depth that would be at the bottom of the drop, the original equation was solved using the momentum equation and acts in the reference by Henderson. The empirical equation, which was based on <clears throat> laboratory results, is shown there also. So both of these equations are utilized to estimate y1. y2, which would be the depth of the flow as it exits the hydraulic drop structure, can be either from the energy equation, which is based on theory, or the empirical equation, which is based on the lab results. If you use these two sets of equations and come up both for both y1 experimental, y1 theoretical, y2 experimental, and y2 theoretical, you get that the length of the drop structure should be anywhere from 38.75 to 39.92 feet. I have prepared a lingo file for you called drop structure DZ known example one dot LG four. Open that particular lingo file and see how the equations of the drop structure have been implemented into that lingo file to make solution of this problem fairly straightforward. If we were to continue on this example, we would like to know if the depth of the water exiting the drop structure is sufficient to go into the downstream conditions. This would tell us if the hydraulic jump is open or submerged. Notice that the height of the step exiting the downstream end of the drop structure is y2 over 6. And we would be assuming that this would be flowing into the normal depth of the constructed channel. So you can see it goes from a rectangular drop structure to a trapezoidal channel. We will do this in the next example.